Hey everyone, it's me, Neil Brennan. My guest today, uh, you saw in the thumbnail, if you're not familiar with him, he just had a Netflix special drop called Working Man. Before that, he had a, a Netflix half hour on the- The stand-ups. The stand-ups. I knew nothing about him until I saw him on the stand-ups, and uh, he's Bargazzi affiliated. He's part of that <laughs> click heavy Southern, the Southern mob. Absolutely. I mean, it's a huge deal. He's on Nate's podcast. He's on. He's got a podcast with his wife called We're Having Fun. His name's Dusty Slay, ladies and gentlemen. Anything right. I left out? Uh, well, uh, the podcast is We're Having a Good Time. We're Having a Good Time. Sorry, that's what he, it's a thing he says. Uh, we're having a good time. And, uh, okay. Okay. When probably when he's, it works best when you're bombing. That's where it came from. Yes. I mean, it's like I was doing a show at a pizza place in New York City, and I just was not doing well. Mm -hmm. And I just kept saying, we're having a good time. And the more I said it, the more people got into the show. Yep. As a old man named Dave Chappelle once said to me, you can tell how funny someone is by how they bomb. Well, I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, I've never thought of that, but I think that's right. I, and I find that if you uh, move around enough awkwardly, touch your glasses enough, your hat, your face, your nose, people will be like, this guy's weird, but I'm into what he's doing. Yeah. So I should touch my face? <laughs> I mean, that's what I do. I don't even know I why I'm doing it. I touch my I'm glasses on three mics so much, I it annoyed me. And yeah. I didn't even know I was doing it. Yeah, I mean, I watch videos of myself and I think, oh man, stop waving so much. But when I'm up there, it feels fun. I'm into it, you know? That's how I get physical with it. Go on, get physical with it. Yeah. Where are you from? I am from Alabama, a town called Opelika, Alabama. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. And Dusty Slay is a fake showbiz name to sound Southern, right? No, it's the real deal. I'll tell you this. It's a little uh, on my government paperwork. My name is listed as Dustin, but no one in my family ever called me Dustin, even my parents. So I'm like, is it really my name? If no one ever right. called me that, they just wrote it down. And why, why they do, if they had no intention of calling you Dustin. My mom says I was named after a, a character on a soap opera named Dusty. And my mm -hmm. dad says I was named after the wrestler Dusty Rhodes. So I don't know where they came up with Dustin. What's great is neither one of them are especially classy. No, you know absolutely what I mean? not. Like from the soaps or from wrestling, either way, you're in Alabama. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a classy Dusty. I can't think of one, but go ahead and write on it <laughs> yeah. in the comments if you can think of a classy Dusty. I mean, Dusty, no. George Strait uh, had a movie called Pure Country. His his name was Dusty. I mean, that's like, you know, that's Texas classy, I think. So you are you have my favorite joke about country music. I don't like country music. I'm not like, I don't hate it. It just doesn't work on me. And I do a thing where instead of, if I cut to the joke, it'll get copyright flag. So I have a new custom where I, I made Brian Regan just do old bits and I would like you, please, if you may, it wasn't too good for Brian Regan. So let people know about the country music well, one. I'll tell you, I mean, the fact that you like that joke, uh, I already liked it. But I was like, oh, that makes me feel really good about the joke. That I specifically liked it. Yeah, because I, I, I figured you weren't a country music fan. Yes. But I say, you know, uh, a good country song can have you reminiscing about times you never had. Like, I never went to the lake growing up. My family wasn't like a lake family. But I hear a country song about the lake. I'm like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's... It's like it's like that with a lot of country. There's a Joe Diffie song where he where he talks about home, where he, where he, I guess he's describing his home, and it, his and I listen to it and it makes me think about my childhood, even though it was nothing like mine. Like he says, home was an easy chair with my daddy there, and I'm like, my parents were divorced. You know, my dad might have had an easy chair, but it wasn't at our house. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it might have been his mistress's house, <laughs> right. but it sure as hell wouldn't yeah. for you. Yeah, and it's like, so, I mean, my my life, much I liked my childhood a lot, but it's like, you listen to these country songs and it's like, it just, just describes this great family What's life. funny is I, could, I grew up not country at all, and I'm a cult, coastal elite, kind of, and I was like, yeah, country music does that. Yeah. Where it just, that guitar, it's like hypnotic. 
and it makes you believe that you you got a girl that got just all the shit that all the country and you i got a pickup truck and i wear boots and i don't yeah and it, yeah it's a vibe and you get into it yes maybe more than any other genre that's why a lot of new country i feel like is losing that vibe right it's there's something about a fiddle and a steel guitar that really brings it in and we're not doing a lot of that these days what is what's new country sound like i don't know it, i feel like all music sounds the same now like it all every, sounds like a japanese video game to me yeah all genres are like the same now it's just different accents yep you you make a good point um alabama so when did you start doing stand-up I moved to Charleston, South Carolina when I was 21. Beautiful city. I love Charleston. it. I love it. I did a show there one night. It was like an enchanted. It's so great. I moved there when I was 21, fresh out of a trailer park. Uh, it's a very classy city. I had a hard time adjusting. Uh, I started doing improv. and uh, What's the name of the improv place uh, there? Theater 99. I think I did a show there. I bet so. Yeah. If you've been there, I bet you've done Theater 99. Yeah. Real small place. Yeah above a bicycle shop. It's is great. this a country song or this is actually? <laughs> no, this is the real thing. It could be. <laughs> but Charleston uh, is such a, and I did I did improv, I did stand up a little bit back then, but I was drinking a bunch and really partying, getting into a vibe. And then, so I quit comedy. And then in 2008, started doing it again when I was about 26. And I felt like I, when I was 21, I was trying to make up all these things. I was trying to make up all these cliched Southern things. I was wearing overalls. I was doing no shoes. I mean, this was, you know, I had no idea what was going on. My whole you life. You literally wearing overalls with no shoes. Oh yeah. My first time ever doing stand up, I went on stage in overalls, no shoes. Uh, you know, I was trying to, you know, and not even that Larry the Cable Guy's taken it that far, but I was trying. I mean, to, no shoes is un, is it, incredible. It, it really Would is. Would you ever make your feet dirtier? No, <laughs> no. But I mean, you know, you're walking around in some of the, because this was like the music farm in Charleston, which all the rock bands would come there at the time. So just walking on that floor is, sure, I mean, that's Walmart feet immediately, <laughs> you know? But a cute case of Walmart feet. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to know about the, because it's not really on here. Well, I guess it is on here. But, oh, yeah, substance abuse. So, and uh, drugs and alcohol. Uh, we'll ding it. All right, what was the what was the premise of all the drinking and drugs? Cause I, and not like there needs to be, other than just like that's what you it seemed like you should do. Well, I think, you know, out of high school, I was like, you know, we, we grew up in a kind of small town, but right next to Auburn University, right? So you had this, I don't know, we just felt like we had this access to different drugs, you know? So we got into acid a bit right out of high school and we would just, we did that a lot. There was quite a crew of us doing it. None of you guys go to college? Yeah, some of us went to college. I mean, most of us were, you know, we graduated high school, but we weren't really doing a college thing. Right, I you, mean, didn't, you didn't graduate like by a lot. You weren't no, like- No, no, we were, you know, we were happy that it happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, and, you know, and not to throw my sisters under the bus, they, they're 10 years older than me and kind of had a different life. But, you know, I was the first one of my mom's kids to graduate high school. My two older hmm. sisters got GEDs. So, uh, you know, so it was a real celebration yeah, just for the diploma. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, you, you just get bored in a, in a small town. And this is not a tiny town, but you get bored and, and, and like, you know, we just kind of, you know, there was a couple of private school kids, one guy. Uh, he actually did go to college. I think he's a rocket scientist out in this area now. Very smart guy. But he was the biggest drug guy of the whole crew, you know? What does that look like? Every day he's doing drugs or it's like- I don't know. I wasn't around, but he could get the best stuff. I mean, the worst experiences I had on acid came from stuff he gave me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, he didn't give it, you know, but- yeah. uh you know, we just, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. You know, there's no, there's no regulation at all. You're just no. getting things. And I would also, it sounds like this is before the internet. Oh yeah. And you can't express to people how little there was to do before the internet. It's so true. It's there a was n fucking, I mean, seventies, eighties, not like I was alive in the, I was whatever social in the late eighties, nineties. And there was nothing to do it was like you you was like we were all shipwrecked and did we're just in this land and had nothing to do we didn't have phone we just 
walk around and go, what's going on? Let's go see if anything's happening over there. Yeah. I mean, we would stay up real late and go to Walmart, you yeah. know, at, you know, f four or five in the morning and just, you know, play in the toy section because there's nothing to do. Yeah. And, and we would drive around. We would, you know, as the sun started to come up, we'd all be on acid driving around and just, we'd be the only car out there on the road. I remember driving, biting the steering wheel as, you know, we're just out of our minds. Did you ever get uh, arrested for it? I never, no. I mean, I did get arrested one time, but it was like, of all the times, that was like the least I should have been arrested for. Yeah. You know, I mean, there were times where- You told the cops that, right? You should have been here last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, if I'd gotten pulled over on, on acid, I mean, who knows what that would have been like? I might have blew the cop's mind. You might have changed all the police work. Yeah. If you said it right. Yeah. What were your acid experiences like? I mean, it's mostly, you know, like you say, I mean, you know, we're sitting around listening to Pink Floyd, watching old SNL VHS tapes, staring at our own faces Best in the of mirror. Best Will Ferrell? We had uh, Chris Farley and Adam Sandler. Great. Just that kind of stuff. We're just sitting around, uh, you know, this, you know, making little fires and, you know, f we got, I got a videotape of us doing it one night, but this, it's not really that exciting of a video. It's just four or five dudes in a house. Yeah. Looking at the guys camera. sitting on the floor. Two, you got two guys on the floor. <laughs> yeah, you got your under overalls on. Uh, no, no, I'm. Uh, I think uh, you know the overalls. That's part of trying to make it. Now, my dad wears overalls every day of his life, so it's not totally made up. But you know, that was part of me trying to what make up. What is the up appeal of character. overalls, by the way? Just you know what I mean. Like, all right, so your dad wears them. Why do you think he wears them? Well, you got a lot of pockets. You okay. know, you got different things. Like, don't you, you lose shit though? If you have that many, but I guess you wear it every day. You yeah, I mean, my dad has, you have a front pocket right here. And he yeah. used to keep his chewing tobacco and a small pistol in there. And I think now we're just- Literally a small pistol. Oh, yeah. Did he ever take it out? Not, not, he's never had to use it that I know about. Yeah. But, you know, it's in there. He's taken it out to show me that he has it in there, <laughs> you know? We were in a Waffle House and I was, and he, my dad kept saying something about this guy with a lot of tattoos in there. And uh, I was like, you, you know, you got to chill out. That guy may have a gun. And he goes, me too, you know? And then he shows it to me. Great. Yeah. Does it make you more hungry or less hungry? I was pretty indifferent to it. You know, <laughs> I don't think I really thought anything about it. Uh, uh, you know. The Southern but, culture of guns, as someone who hasn't, didn't grow up there and has so little experience with guns, is just like a thing that you get used to. Yeah, I mean, it never, like, I, I don't even know if it's a thing you have to get used to. You just kind of grow up with it, and you don't even think about it. Like, I took hunter safety courses, you know. I'm a pretty good shot. But, you know, we did. We also learned to, like, not play with guns. Yeah. You know, like, my dad had a gun. He may still have it. He had, like, a, you know, the gun belt hung around his bedpost with a gun in it, like, my whole childhood. And we just knew- Plus the overall pistol. Oh yeah. I mean, we just knew not to mess with it. It wasn't locked. He had some guns in a cabinet, but no safe, you know. That he is may a have funny now, thing of but... like, why have, if you've got one on your bedpost and one in the, in the, in the front pocket, what are the, what are the shelf? Well, you don't sleep in the overalls, you know, so. You well, need... no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I got, I see that. I've yeah. accounted for that. That's why he's got it next to the bed. <laughs> yeah. What are the what are the, the the showcase guns for? You mean like in a cabinet? Yeah. You know, you'll have the rifles and shotguns for hunting. Okay. So you're not you're not really show well, I guess you are showing them off. You want, you know, you want other hunters that come over to know what you're working with. <laughs> I got a home video of my dad. I think this was my dad, like he got a video camera and was trying to uh in case he got the guns got stolen, but it's like him showing every gun, reading off the serial number, reading the brand. I mean, it's a whole video going through the whole thing. And is he proud or is it just like, this is informational? I, I think a little of both. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely proud. He's like, look at this thing. It's a, it's a funny, It's I mean, I get it, but I it also, the thing that no one ever, there was a Reddit thread the other day about killing a home intruder what it's like to kill a home intruder. It's a joke I've never been able to do was, so if someone breaks into my house, I have to shoot them. And then we just have to sit there and wait till the cops arrive for probably 10 minutes. And is it, does it become like a small talk situation? Like what, so what made you pick? You're just sitting there 
And then there's, I mean, in the in the Reddit thread, there was things about like little kids, and it just seems like I just take my TV. I don't want to kill someone. Yeah, take my TV. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a wild thing. I mean, I, I, you know, my dad has never had to shoot anyone. Yeah. Uh, I've never shot anyone. I, you know, I've gone hunting. You know, I've killed small animals when I was younger, but I've never killed a deer. I went hunting a few years back. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking, if a deer actually came, could I shoot it at yeah. this point? And I don't know if I could. I like animals. I like nature. And I understand hunting. I like eating meat. Uh, but I just don't know that I could do it. Well, that happens in war a lot. Yeah. That there are guys that sign up, enlist, get drafted, go. And then I think World War II, they were just shooting in the air because they didn't want to kill people. Oh, yeah. Which is like there's a there's also a statistic about in terms of uh, repeat murderers. Someone if you've killed someone once, there's a one percent chance you'll do it again. Wow. So 99% of people are like, did it? Don't, no thank you. And I get, I did it once and I don't think, I, that wasn't helpful for me, yeah. for my life overall. Yeah, I couldn't, I don't think I could live with it. I accidentally killed a groundhog in my backyard and uh, I still- With a gun? Uh, with a, well, with a trap. I was trying to get something else and it got the groundhog. What were you trying to get? Well, I was trying, I wasn't, I was trying to trap the groundhog and take it away. And question it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just wanted to get rid of it. It was eating my garden. I wanted to get yep. it in the cage and then it died in there. How and long was it in there for? I don't know. I feel bad about it. I was. No, I, it is a weird. Even killing, even mouse traps is a bit like, I don't love this process. No, I left and I, I accidentally left the cage set up the trap set up and it died in there. And I it's I still feel bad about it. Like I wanted it to stop eating my vegetables, but yeah, I didn't want simple... to kill it. No. And I, you know, I tried to save a turtle the other day. It was a big snapping turtle and I couldn't uh, get it off the road because it kept trying to snap at me. So I was like, I'm gonna go. Can home. you go up behind it, or they they're pretty? Well, fast. they they get it. They're pretty fast. Yeah. So I was like, I'm and gonna the, go. The, they have those necks that like. Oh yeah. Dart. So I was like, I'm gonna go home and get a bucket, and I'm gonna get this thing out of the road. And by the time I got back, someone had ran over the turtle and killed it. Yeah, and now you have a relationship with the turtle. And I, yeah, I'm like, I, I almost had you. Yeah, and you just go, fuck, it's happening all the time. All around us. All the time, yeah. For millions of years. Animals eating, being eaten, eat just over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, there's an Instagram, nature is metal. Yeah, I'm, watch, I'm with and I'm it. Just, I watch it, but I'm just I like, do too. Oh, man. But most of the time, it's like how it's pro-animal. Yeah. Nature is metal. It really is about how. A lot of it's just about like, can you believe how fast this cheetah is? Yes. The one, the cheetah in the savannah in Africa, the one that's like the football play where you can't believe how fast the it's like a trail and there's there's a people in the van or whatever and you can't believe how fast it is oh yeah it's that's the medalist of all the metal okay so it's funny i don't know where you are with drugs and alcohol now but i'm in the spiritual use of drugs or at least that's what i tell myself yeah uh but i would argue it is uh, now it's a god experience every time i do it and not like god i saw god like it's a genuine god connection are you have you evolved in any way around the drug use well i don't do anything now i i kind of i was doing weed for a long time i like to say doing weed, yeah but it's uh, cool yeah I was doing it for a long time and just recently I quit and not for any reason. I just was like, I kind of was just taking a break and I'm like, I don't know. I feel fine. I've been, yeah. I've just been doing it. And I actually, you know, I got a joke about it on the special, but weed is too strong for me now. Yeah. That, that was a good joke. Where I'm like, I just do a little bit of it and now I'm, I'm freaking out and, and it's not every time, but it's enough to where I'm like, it's just not that fun. To and do. again, it's, the le the weed that used to be available was garbage. Oh, so bad. Like it was like no one knew how to do it. No one knew how to grow. It. Like by the time it got to people, it was junk. Yeah, I mean, you had to know a friend yep. or just go. We would just go to an area of town where we knew people were selling weed and you just drive up and then they come up to your car and you give them the money and sometimes they would just have it or other times they'd be like, all right, I got to go get it. And then sometimes they come back 
Sometimes they didn't. There was no uh, quality control. No, and then like, you know, even if you get robbed in this neighborhood, the next time you need weed and don't have it, you're like, well, let's go again. Let's, let's see if let's they don't. Let's just see if it works out. Statistically, we shouldn't get robbed this time, but who yeah. knows? And it never was like, uh, I had- you I, robbed, Would you get robbed with guns? No, I just would get robbed by them just not by Oh, me. they just would go yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna go around. Now, I did have some friends that went late at night mm -hmm. on acid to get weed to this area and- Would they, this be a black area or white area? Uh, it could be either. A lot of, this particular one was a black area. Yeah. And the guy stuck a gun in his side and said, just give me the money. And we're talking $25 yeah. here. And, and, and so instead of my friend giving him the money, he just took off in the truck and the guy started shooting. And my friend threw my other friend's head down in the, just threw it down in the floorboard and a, a bullet hit the back glass and then went through the front glass. And then if you sit in the truck after that, like where the bullet went through would have been right through his head had my friend not thrown him down. And it's just wild. So your friend's the one who hit the gas. Yes. And knew like action movie style. Yeah. Thrust your friend down. Yeah. And I mean, he, you know, it's, you know, it's his fault that they were in that situation in the first place. But, yeah, but I'm saying- And he saved his life. That's incredible. And also, it's $25. Right. Maybe. It could don't have been Don't shoot. 10. Like, don't shoot. <laughs> yeah. Is that worth it? And is it worth it to drive away? None of them are worth Everyone, it. Everyone, I, I, they're all getting F, Fs yes. for that. Like, none of it was, it was, the whole thing was wrong. Did the acid mushrooms, anything? A little bit of mushrooms. It Did was, any of it change your outlook? Because, because- you have a cockeyed point of view, as do I, as if any decent comedian, just you just don't see things correctly. Yes. Um, or you see them, you don't see them the way you're supposed to, you see them the way you see them and you can't undo it. And that's what, Absolutely. that's what comedy is. But did the drugs have any effect on that? I don't know. I mean, you know, we did think that we were all, you know, that was the whole thing with acid back then. That's what they would say. You're expanding your mind. Yeah. You would say we're opening other parts of the brain. And we don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's true, but that's what we would think. We're opening new parts to our brain. So, you know, we would, you know, we loved like taking acid and listening to a Pink Floyd album yeah. and just thinking we understood the world for a yeah. little while. And then, But it's so know, funny because you don't, you're not you're just listening to Pink Floyd. It's right. like everyone listens to the same eight things. Yes. And lining it up with Wizard of Oz and all those goofy oh, things. Oh, yeah. All those like folk tales. But we listened to disc one of The Wall and we analyzed that like we, because, you know, there's no internet. So there's no, there's nowhere. To, you can't just Google it and go, what's nope. this mean? What's this about? We didn't have any. We just had the disc. Mm -hmm. we, it might have even been a burned disc. We didn't have the album covers. So we're just listening and we're just analyzing this thing to death. And we, you know, we just felt so smart. We felt like we were just uncovering the world out here. Beyond that, was it, what was it like to be on acid as you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's been so long ago. This yeah. was, you know, over 20 years ago yeah. when I was doing this. But um, I don't know. It just felt wild. I, you know, I, I I had, you know, I had a good childhood, but I, you know, I grew up fairly sheltered in a way. Like I went to the city school, but I grew up in the country, right? So it's like- You have all those jokes about the trailer park, right? I grew up in a trailer park, uh, which wasn't that fun. So not sure why they call it a park. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, my parents are divorced. So I live with my mom in the trailer park. And then I live with, and then, uh, you know, every other weekend I was with my dad on a farm. Uh, but even the trailer park was in the country. Like it was a small, I don't know, 10, 15 trailer park, 10 trailer, 15 trailer, trailer park yeah. uh, on a dirt road, woods to either side of us. So it's like, that's what I did my whole childhood was just explore the woods. And did you realize like, I think differently at any point? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I felt like I'm for sure like the weird kid of my friends, but not weird in a way that I'm not cool. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, I like know I'm, I'm weirdly, I mean, people aren't picking on me saying you're weird, but you know, we used to play, I remember we used to play like horse, you know, the yeah. basketball, but we, we came up with all these different 
style horse. I don't remember any of them, but we had a notebook and it was like, <laughs> all right, you do this and then you do that, you know? It's like, yeah. so we're just always creating something. And you you were like spearheading it? Or oh, your friend, yeah. Seinfeld has an observation that I, I actually think is very true. He's like, when I was in high school, everyone was funny. And then they stopped and I just kept doing it. Where it's, you guys are riding horse. You're like, have a ledger. Oh, yeah. Which is funny and weird. And then they all become whatever they become. And you go, well, I'm going to keep riding horse. Yeah. I mean, of those kids, I mean, it's like, you know, one, you know, it's like uh, one guy's an electrician. I'm still in touch with him. Another guy, I don't know what he does, but, you know, it he just, he's regular. N- yeah. And then another guy uh, is dead. And uh, um, so it's like, uh, you know, everybody goes their own paths, but yeah. nobody's still creating horse except for me. <laughs> no, it's now streaming, creating horse, Dusty Sly. <laughs> okay, so you just so the drug thing was just like purely recreational and purely time filling, and not even necessarily character building or just like I don't know. I, it's just nothing to do. Let's do that. Yeah, I remember my friend, uh, he was smoking a joint outside my car. It's my best friend, and I had not seen him in a long time. He came, he moved away, and then he came to visit me. And I just hung out with him while he smoked his joint. I was like, you know, I'm like, I'm, I don't mess around with it. I don't, you know, I'm not judging you, but I don't do it. And then we hung out. And then, you know, he, like a year later, maybe not even, you know, I'm now I'm drinking. You know, you get into drinking. I, the first time I ever smoked weed was when I was drinking. And then you just... I don't know, things just start to unfold. You're like, well, drinking, I did that, and that was fun. I did uh, weed, and that was fun. Now it's like, let's try these other things. Yeah, they, when they call weed a gateway drug, they totally ignore beer Oh and yeah. alcohol. It's like, that's the gateway drug. They sell it fucking everywhere. Yeah. And, and it leads to, no one jumps alcohol to go oh, to weed. Yeah. No, the first time I had weed, I was drunk at a party at my own house and some guys were smoking weed out So back. was everyone. Yeah. No one's ever just, you just, that's how it go. That's the, that's the, that's the school. That's like seventh grade is weed and then eighth grade, or I'm sorry, seventh grade is alcohol and then eighth grade is weed. And- yeah. And see, I was late to the game, especially for a, you know, a trailer park kid. I mean, you, you think, you know, trailer park in Alabama, I was, you know, drinking in sixth grade, but I'm like, you know, I'm 17 before sure. I ever got drunk the first time. And, but I was like, this is great. Like it just. Did you like the feeling of alcohol? Yeah. I think what I still miss about alcohol is you that. You stopped drinking. Yeah. I haven't drank in 12 years. But it's like what I, and I don't really consider myself an alcoholic. Yep. I was just like, this is a becoming a problem yeah. for me. But I, um, I like that when you're drinking, like your your brain is like there are no consequences. I can say whatever I want. I can, and it's like this super free feeling. Like you're free from your mind. You're free from being like, ah, oh, I shouldn't say this, or oh, you know, you're just free to do whatever you want to yeah. do. You know, but the problem is that, you know, there are consequences. I mean, to quote Donald Rumsfeld, freedom is messy. Freedom's untidy and free people are free to make mistakes and commit crimes and do bad things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. It is. And I mean, I loved it. And that's like. Cue Britney Spears knife dancing. Yes. Freedom's untidy and free people are free to make mistakes and commit crimes and do bad things. You want her free? Okay. Absolutely. She's going to knife dance. Yes. And you want to be free? Who knows what you're going to say? And who knows who you're going to say it to and how they're going to take it when they're drunk? Because two people that don't experience consequences, anything can happen. People piss all kinds of places. People puke all, people fuck the wrong people. They don't. All of those things. Yes. I mean, I would drink. I mean, I, several times I would be drinking and I would go out back or go to the bathroom, throw up, and then come back and keep going. You know, it's yeah. like, I wasn't making myself throw up, but I'm like, oh, I had mimosas all morning and now I'm doing whiskey. It's like. I like when drunk people blame their methods. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I did, what my mistake was that I did wick, liquor before <laughs> beer. It's like, no, it's. All poison. Yes, yes. It's just the sequence of poison. You're going to puke no matter what. So, yes. Yeah. And and I was like, it's like, I read about this type of alcoholic. I still don't consider myself that, but I, it's like when alcohol gets in your blood, 
it's like you're like ready to go. And that's me. I'm fine without alcohol. But if I did, if I had a beer, I feel like immediately I would be like, oh, this is what I've been missing. Let's do this. Yeah. And do you kind of keep yourself from it because you just know it'll, it'll, yeah, just, that's exactly it, you right. You will hit the gas and there's no break. When I stopped doing it, my life got so much better. And I'm like, if I just, I don't even want to chance it. I was in a church one time and most of the churches I went to growing up, when you would do communion, you wouldn't do it every Sunday, but you, when, when they would do it, it would be grape juice. I went to a church after I quit drinking, just a few months. I had never been there. They did communion, took a shot and it was pretty big and it was wine. And I sat there for a minute in that church, like, am I going to go to brunch now after this? I mean, like, I was like, I mean, it was are wild. We, Jesus, are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was Lord, wild. Father God. And it passed, but I was like, it was scary for a minute. I was like, I'm about to go. I'm well, I know people that did, that did, that are drug addicts like Greg Giraldo, like Greg Giraldo was the kind of, had the kind of brain that if you added, once he added cocaine to it, and I didn't even know Geraldo well, but I could, even when he was sober, it was so kinetic. And then when, if you add, I think it was just like, like al alive in a way that he couldn't fathom. Yeah. And with alcohol, I feel like that's the same way with, with certain kinds of people. Oh yeah. That aren't even, the trouble isn't, isn't like sloppy and all that it's like no i'm so activated it's i'd be a sucker not to drink yeah i mean that's like it's like if i drink i'm like this if i get high i go i go down yeah. and i'm like you know it's that's why weed was never as much of a problem for me because i i can't do comedy high mm -hmm. so uh you know on days that i am doing a show i don't smoke weed you know maybe till after but it just keeps me from doing it all day every day but drinking of course i can do comedy drinking so Especially. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> mint mobile ads are easy for me because i'm i'm living this life on average it takes about 30 days for a person to break their new year's resolution so if saving money was on your 2024 list your odds aren't looking that great there chief luckily i have a hundred percent guaranteed way to save you money this year just switch to mint mobile right now mint mobile has wireless plans starting at $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for 15 bucks a month. I do it. I'm living the life, guys. I'm saving probably $150 a month based on me and my mom's usage. I went from one of the big guys to Mint Mobile. I stand by it. I guarantee it. It's a brand name. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium service for 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Choose from three, six, or 12-month plans and say goodbye to monthly phone bills. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. So use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep the same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get your first three months of premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash N-E-A-L. That's M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash N-E-A-L. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash neil. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Okay, and then what's your relation? What's the God's, where are you with God? And don't be shy because you're in LA. No, I mean, I've always been a Christian, um, but when I quit drinking in 2012, I really like started to read the Bible in a way that I had never done before. And I just felt feel like I was opened up to new things. And uh, I just, it just sent me on a journey really to, you know, work on myself and, uh, um, you know, and just, uh, you know, try. What to... do you think the theme as someone who I grew up Catholic, but I haven't read the Bible. What do you think the theme or the point of the Bible is? Like, it's like, I go, I, I've never read it. What is it? What's it about? Well, I think it, you know, I think it's many things, uh, you know, and it's like, I feel like, you know, a lot of Christians today only go New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, yeah, obviously Jesus is a big, uh, is, is, is the major uh, point. Uh, you know, it's like, 
but I, I don't know. I feel like I'll the screw Old this. Testament's like more hand to hand, like yeah. whispering in people's ears and kill people and smiting and uh, right. But see, I'm into a lot of Old Testament stuff. I feel like Jesus did away with all that stoning, and he's like, you know, because he says to Jesus people, was like New Age. Yeah, he's like. He, he says, uh, he who is without sin cast the first stone, right? Yeah. Which to me says, well, n- none of us are able to cast a stone Correct. out here. So we're all guilty. So let's not be trying to stone people anymore. Correct. But, you know, I like a lot of Old Testament stuff. I don't eat pork. I don't eat shellfish. I gave that stuff up. I don't do a lot of, you know, traditional holidays. I try to, you know, keep kind of biblical holidays like Passover and whatnot. Okay. I'm, I'm not Jewish, but I, you know, I, I and and I don't think that you have to be to do those things. Do you? What do you? When you said work on yourself, because of obviously it, there's no parts of the Bible that are like work on yourself. But what are the things? So obviously judgment for cast the first stone. Um, what things do you feel like? you you it made you work on you know i just feel like it can you know cause you to uh treat people better because mm-hmm. you know that you know god is always watching you mm-hmm. right so you're like uh and 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 not from a necessarily a fear sense but like you know we we act differently if someone's watching us as yeah. opposed to not watching us. And I just feel like if you know that God is always watching you, then you, uh, you know, you're like, I'm going to be a better person. Yeah. You know, I try to be nice to people when people don't see, you know, in a way where I'm not trying that to, to me is the best re- repercussion of religion is I call it super cop. It's like God is super cop. Yeah. And like when they, they say it's the cause of all wars and it's also the cause of people not getting punched in the face or cars stolen or candy yeah, or merchant, whatever. Like, right. you just, ah. Yeah. And also, you know, and I feel like, you know, I, I, it just helps me realize that everybody is going through something. Mm-hmm. So it's like, even when people, and it's hard, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. I get irritated out here too, but it's like, when people do approach me with an attitude or give me an attitude, I try to have a, you know, I go, well, I don't know what they're going through. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid uh, saying something to someone at McDonald's, like, you know, well, that's, you know, or not even to them, but just to myself, like, well, that's why you're working at McDonald's. And my right. sister was like, you don't know why they're working here. You don't know what their circumstance is. And that always resonates with me too. And I feel like that. Yeah. Also, you're wearing overalls with <laughs> right. bare feet. Right. 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 It's like, you know, it's like, who are we to judge anybody, yeah. you know? And that that's just how I try to live my life. And, um, uh, you know, and I think um, uh, that helps me. I think the the it helps me to, and also it's like, you know, it's a dark world out here in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, there's hope that uh, when I leave this world, I go to a better place, uh, that this is not everything. To me, it's a, it would be a little sad to think that what what we have here and not that my life is not good, but that what we have here is is everything. That we have these incredible kind of spirits living inside these bodies that no other animal seems to have. I mean, you could argue that dogs and cats have it. Yeah. Uh, a horse that you've been riding for a long the time. The possum that you caught. What did you right, catch? Right. Uh, what, what did I say? Uh, uh, well, we thought it was a cat. You know? Right. The, but he, I heard he specifically had, and the turtle. Simon Turtle had a great person oh, and was oh, sentient. Oh, oh, yes, and then, yes. But you didn't do it in time, so. But it's like, you know, these things, you don't, you never come across like a turtle village where they're like living in houses, drinking tea, <laughs> you know? <laughs> let, me, let me push back on that. <laughs> That's not the sign of a, of a, they have their village, they have their, their pods, they have their communities. Right. I don't, I don't just cause like, well, where are your books, turtles? Like that, that doesn't, I don't, I'm vegan, so I don't eat animals just yeah. cause I don't need to. I right. just feel like I don't need to. Someone did a joke a long time ago where they go, I think it was Dan Cronin. He was a, he wrote for Cronin, he was a comic and he goes, he goes, what did we, what did chickens do to us? <laughs> that right. we're doing this to them like at this point we're just rubbing it in like let's do nuggets of them just this sadistic ass approach to all that but 
my my experience with having not read the Bible, and I got here from basically ayahuasca and DMT and MDMA, is that it isn't literal. I don't take this literally anymore. And it's not actual. It's like almost a metaphor or something for an actual... I don't think we have any sense of what's actually happening. Yeah, I mean that. Well, that could very well be true. Maybe we don't, you know. And I, but I think. But you I know. do believe that we are infinite spirits caught in these bodies, and because you can remember as someone not didn't even know you, you've been you since your first fucking memory. Yeah, and you, you know, and 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 I, I, I wonder sometimes if not for pictures or or mirrors, if we would even know that we've changed. Right. It's like because, you know, you're just living your life. You think about yourself. I, I remember you. I, I have I have a great memory and I remember things from my childhood very vividly. I mean, I'm sure everyone does, but I, I just feel like I, I, you know, I'll tell a joke or I'll say something on a podcast and a friend will message me and say, man, I can't believe you remember that. Yeah. You know, uh, but it's like. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I I agree that, I mean, all the, that turtle very well could have had a home that he was making his way back to. Yeah. Right. But I just think that we're different as humans. I think we're uh, so much different. And I just like to think that, you know, when we die, it's not just over for us. What do you think of nature? Because I now think of nature as, I, and again, I did, this is all from, I believe that every religion has the right uh idea which is that there is a central creation force and um this is all an expression of that yeah for sure i mean i'm a respecter of all religions because i you know i who am i to you know i i grew up you know i've I've changed my beliefs but i've stayed in the same religion right essentially but uh you know i don't know what to tell yeah, someone it's also, that grew up it, a certain a joke i tried that wasn't funny enough where i was like when you hear Jewish people describe their God, Muslim people describe their God, and Christians describe their God. It's like, I think you're talking about the same guy. It's like a police description with slight differences. Yeah. Like, what are the odds that this is a different thing individually? And then if you look at Islam and Judaism, half of their holy sites are identical. Right. They're like the the most, the temple on the rock is this, it's 300 yards from the Muslim sacred. So it's like, guys, it's all the same person or, or, yeah, and entity. I don't, you know, and it's, it's supposedly all stems from Abraham in the Bible. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it is, yeah, you know, or it's, it, it, is that in, I don't know if the Quran incorporates Abraham as well, but like, it's the same thing. You're just describing it in yeah. a different way. I, I said don't it's know. like that's franchises. Why say, that's why I say supposedly. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. you know, the idea being that Abraham two, had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Yeah. And that's what someone told me. I don't know that Ishmael would have Islam would have come from him and 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 uh Islam's from I don't know. But right, but it's all right. like, okay, maybe we got the different names, but this is the same we're all talking about the same thing. And to me, all these arguments and fights and wars become about real estate and human power. It's yeah, not I mean, even, you know, Christian denominations, they're not necessarily fighting each other, but, you know, they 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 get into fights and split. And that's why you have Baptist, Methodist, non-denominational. You have so many, uh, you know, all, all, I guess, deriving from Catholicism. It seems silly. Even like uh, I've gotten to know a lot of, well, I don't, I don't know them, but I've interacted with a lot of Amish Mennonite people. How uh, come? Well, we have a lot of that in Tennessee and uh, I have a cabin that I have built uh, in, in a smaller part of Tennessee where a bit built by Mennonites. And so it's like apparently- well, Are like, they cheaper or more or less cheap? More expensive around the I think they're more expensive than Amish. Is that what you mean? Or just regular. I think cheaper laborers. than just regular stuff. Cheaper. Cheaper, yeah. Great. But I, I, now, I don't know. If you buy some Amish furniture, now that's a different thing. Well, they're charging. They got that oven, right? Yes. They got, yeah, that's a. But, but like, you know, I, I was told like Mennonites split off from the church because they wanted to be a little more extreme. 
Yeah. And then Amish split from the Mennonites because they wanted to be even more extreme. And I like Mennonite. Uh, Amish. You think that's seem... the right amount of extreme? I think so. Mennonites, can, do they do TV? Uh, they don't do TV or radio, okay. apparently, but they do electricity. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I you know, it, it's like we talk, talk at the beginning of this about not having the internet and how boring things were. And I agree. Um, but in a way, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, do we just have too much? Do we, we have too much entertainment? A million percent have too much. And I have a new theory about Western life or whatever, modern life, that it's we all have these decadent emotions and expectations of everything because we're all everything's catered to us so yes we all have these decadent sexual needs and decadent emotional needs and decadent like food and deck just all yeah. this like no i want it i want is it available get boop get bring it to me read me a book <laughs> It's yeah. all so insane. Yeah, it is. I was uh, at my hotel this morning and then I turned on the shower and like it took a minute for the hot water to come. You were you furious? Like, yeah, I was like, come on, guys. I'm going to fucking call. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it wasn't so extreme, but I had to check myself to where it's like, you know, hot water is coming and I'm going to get an amazing shower. Yep. And then I'm going to put on clean clothes. If yeah. I don't like those clothes, I'll put on the other clothes that I have. Yes, which are dirty, <laughs> kind of. Yes. They're dirty from the airplane that you were on. A lot of people haven't flown. <laughs> yes. Well, planes, I mean, what a wild experience that is. I mean, I got on a flight last night from Tennessee, and in four hours I was here. Uh, and that would have been a lifelong journey that people might not ever come back from. Yeah. Years ago, not, yeah, like a, it would have been five months. Horse they and might carriage. not have even made it. They might not have. And then when they got there, they're probably never coming back. Well, yeah, once you get out here, <laughs> yeah, you've been here, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was a shit was real different, and we have it real good, and we're so spoiled, t completely spoiled about everything all the time. Yeah, and I we sound a million years old saying this, but yeah. I I promise you. You appreciate what you have because it's incredible. Yeah, I was riding uh, in an Uber one time with a, a an Indian man, and he was telling me that he's from India, and he was saying that the the part of India he's from, he's like, uh, you have to get up at like four or five in the morning because that's when they turn the water on, mm -hmm. and he's like, you got to get all your buckets ready to fill it up because if you miss it then you just don't have water that day. I was talking to somebody last night about AI, artificial intelligence. You know, within five years, it's going to be, we're all going to have our heads hooked up to whatever. And there are going to be a, a billion people on earth going, hey, do you think I could just have a toilet before we go to this brain thing? Do you think I could live through the period oh, where yeah. I have running water and a fucking toilet? Can I just experience that quickly before I jump to this weird ass singularity? Like we're so separated in terms of our experiences today and that there are guys, India has rolling blackouts every day, electricity, every day, not yeah. some days when it's rainy, <laughs> every day yeah, yeah. and work and you're like, I'm going to fucking sue this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hi, Neil Brennan here. Hey, um, how scrupulously are you checking your bills? Are you like, are you just kind of like, bah, bah, yep, and then blah, blah, blah. yeah, that's my impression of you checking your bills. My point is, if you check them quickly and and you kind of just go like, yeah, I don't know, I, bah, and you or you see a subscription that maybe you thought you canceled that you didn't, and you and then you forget, and then you get caught up, and you start listening to your podcast, you know how you get. Rocket Money is the thing for you. The other day I got charged for I can't say what it was, but uh, I subscribed a long time ago and uh, I forgot about it. It was an annual charge. And it's one of those things where I'll do the sample and then I'll be like, I'll cancel. Then I forget to cancel or whatever. Long story short, Rocket Money was there for me. Rocket Money helped me. Rocket Money, Rocket Money, Rocket Money. Here's what's great about Rocket Money. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone 
with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Bad for companies, great for you, great for Rocket Money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash N-E-A-L. That's rocketmoney.com slash N-E-A-L. Rocketmoney.com slash Neil. All right, here's some more blocks. Work-life balance. That's interesting to me. Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm, my wife used to do comedy. We Mm -hmm. met doing comedy. She's from Canada. I was living in Charleston, South Carolina. We met at an open mic in New York City that you signed up and they gave you. How long uh, did you live in New York for? I never lived there. I spent a month there. I have a, I had a friend there. His had a room come open. I wanted to spend a little time. I said, would your landlord let me rent that for one month? And he got his landlord to do it. So I just went for a month. Uh, I had saved up money and I just went uh, and just did open mics every day. I mean, in, in Charleston, you you were lucky to get two open mics a week. Yeah. So I was like, to me, I was like- Is I'm it still a, like that? Uh, maybe worse. Wow. M- may, you know, because we had a nice community for a while. I don't know what it's yeah. like, but it could be better, could be worse, yep. but it's not much better. But I was like, I want to do one open mic every day for 30 days. I mean, to me, this was a wild idea. I realized people are doing, and I, I ended up doing 47 uh, in a month. And I was like, I was just like, this is amazing. Yeah. But I met my wife at one of those open mics. We didn't start dating then, but we stayed in contact. Um, and so she was doing comedy for a long time. She moved down here. We got married. Uh, we never planned to have kids. And then in 2018, she stopped. Like you specifically didn't want to have kids. Yeah, we talked about not having kids. What were your reasons? I don't know. I feel like the world's always going to end at some point. And and we're, uh, you know, just what you're talking about. All our brains are about to be hooked to computers. And I just thought, why would I bring kids into the world? Right. And then uh, 2018, my wife stopped doing comedy. Uh, The road was too much for her. She, She was great at comedy and she was really booked up. But the road was too much. She just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And then COVID happened and we're like, just kind of stuck at home. And for whatever reason, we decided that we wanted to have kids. Uh, like, And it still makes no sense to me that my whole uh, worry this whole time was that things were going to get really bad. There was going to be a pandemic. <laughs> and then like when it's the worst it's ever yeah. been in my life, I just felt like, I should have kids. And my wife was into it. We we just, I don't know, something just changed in us. And so we had our daughter in 2021. And then I had a son in, uh, um, I don't know, 2023. Uh, so they're about two years apart. And, and so now I'm like, uh, and my career was going well in 2018. I mean, things were really happening. Uh, that's when it started to happen. And then in 2020, it was going great other than the fact that- we What couldn't. was, I see, because I had no sense of, until I saw you on Netflix. I didn't know anything about you. Well, I was just working the road, you know, yeah. just out here. That's why I moved to Nashville. Headlining clubs in the just on the road and selling out or just like- not Doing. selling out, but but you know hitting my guarantee, hitting my my guarantees. Got it. But it's like in you know in 2018 I did uh, just for laughs, uh, new faces unwrapped mm-hmm. had a great set. Uh, I I got a I signed a development deal with ABC for a show that great. never got made, but I made a little money. Great. Uh, and then I got that experience, which was cool to write a script. Um, obviously not good enough, but uh, no, I I think it was great. Uh, but the uh, and then I did the Tonight Show that that year for the first time, which really did a lot for me. And I got you know management and agents and and then suddenly rooms that I couldn't even maybe I did see on the Tonight Show, yeah. Rooms that I couldn't even get in to feature, now I'm headlining. So things are going well. And then in 2019, I got Variety's top 10 comics to watch. Great. Felt really fun. And then here we go, 2020, boom, all stopped. Uh, but it was a nice break for me. At first, I was like, this is really great. I've been traveling 
for for I, I don't know at this point six years straight. Every weekend, if I can, I'm going out doing comedy. So it was a nice break. Yeah. But uh, and then thing you know things came back and started going again, and then we had the kids, and so the career's going really well. But now it's like the best it's ever been. And career. so I, my career, yeah, and it's like, but now I have two kids, and I want to be a good dad. Yeah, I don't want to be so focused on you know my career that I uh, I I'm not there to raise my kids. Did you feel a change? I, I've been told that when you have a kid a part of your brain opens up that you didn't even know existed. 100%. I mean, when I had my daughter, um, I, I don't know that it was all that real to me until my, and I, and I didn't stand down and watch the baby yeah. come out, but I stood at my wife's shoulder and then I saw this human being come out that we had created. Yep. Uh, and I was I was changed in that moment where I'm like, oh, now I got to be a better dude. I got to be a better guy. I got to, I have to live now. It's funny. How did that compare to the Bible? Well, you know, the. <sighs> Me, do you know what I mean? And just in terms of like the Bible, it's sort of esoteric. It's sort of ethereal or kind of like you should, you might want to. And then this, well, I think like. I think the, the Bible was morally better, uh, and the 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 my daughter was like uh, just like uh, I got to take care of my health better. I have to, you know, uh, you know, just take things more serious now. I have to. I can't just sit at home and watch YouTube all day. I need to like now. I have to really get in gear as a as a man to take care of my daughter. Yeah, because you know. You know, they say like, you know, women's uh, example of, you know, their first example of a man, you know, is their dad or whatever. I don't yeah. know what the expression Some is. Some bullshit. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, But it's like, yeah, I mean, I want, um, you know, uh, my daughter to expect to be treated a certain way. Yeah. So I feel like I'm the guy that needs to show her That's how to be That's why you pay treated. for all of her dinners and stuff. So yes. <laughs> when she starts dating, she'll expect that. Exactly. Okay. So the thing about work-life balance, I've been just been thinking a lot recently about basic gender differences is one of my uh, one of my areas yeah and the when you think about your performance as a man father how much of that is like i just need to earn well there is a part of that because i don't want my daughter to grow up poor i mean right I, but know. i'm saying like it, how much of it's emotional and how much of it is just practical i need x amount of dollars I don't care how I get it. I'm going to fucking get it for these kids. I don't know. I don't think there's so much of that. Okay. I think I, I don't think there is a, any number figure on it. I yeah, mean, I, not necessarily number yeah. figure, but like safety Yeah, provisions. I mean, it's like, it is like, yeah, I mean, I want to, uh, you know, make sure they have, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I want to, you know, I want like my house, my mortgage to be paid off mm -hmm. so we don't lose our house yep. ever. Like if something crazy were to happen, we wouldn't lose our house and they're, they're always going to have food and things like that. So I want to make, you know, the right kind of investments uh, to, to ensure that that's, that's in place. But I, but, but, you know, another thing is like, I just want to stay married, uh, to my wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, I grew up with divorced parents and at, even in I'm 41, it still affects my life. Like, you know, we can't, I still can't do holidays with my, yeah. with my parents together. Uh, and now they're getting older. It's like this year I took my dad to my mom's Thanksgiving and my mom has, I have two older sisters that are, uh, my mom's kids, mm -hmm. not my dad's. Right. So, uh, so I took my dad to that Thanksgiving. First time ever. First time ever. And I got them agree to, to do it. Why'd you do it? Well, I did it because, you know, both my parents are getting old. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to spend Thanksgiving with both of them. But now I have a busy schedule. I have my own things going on. I have my own kids. I can't do two Thanksgivings like I've done my whole life. Yeah. So I'm like, I need you guys to just be together. But it was so weird for me. 
I was like, because I don't know, they can't be cool with each other. Yeah. Like my, they, they're not fighting, but my whole life, it's like, they're always like, I have this thing where it's like, I feel like uh, my problem with my parents is that they both wanted me. They both wanted me. Like a lot of people have, you know, neglect yeah. issues where their parents are like pushing them off to the other one. Mine is like both my parents wanted me to be with them. Which is a different kind of tension. Yeah. And so, and rather than working it out, yeah, they worked it out through me where they would be like, you know, tell your dad, you're going to stay with me this weekend. Or my dad would be like, tell your mom, call your mom, tell her you're going to stay an extra day. And then, and, and then just instead of my mom knowing that my dad put me up to this and going, yeah, it's okay. She would, you know, put the guilt on me and it's yeah. like this whole, so it's like, yeah, that's still in me now. So I show up, my, my daughter uh, doesn't really have a lot to do with my dad. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't see him that often, but. Your daughter's three, four? She's two, two, two and a half. Okay. Yeah. So she, you know, she doesn't want to sit with my dad. She doesn't want to do any of that with my dad. He's, you know, kind of a stranger to her. And she sees my mom more often. So my dad came to visit me for two days. My daughter would not hang out with him at all. And then we all show up to my sister's house where my mom is. And my daughter immediately runs up and gets in her lap. And I'm like, he didn't say anything, but I know he saw it. And it's just like, and so I'm, I, so I got that emotion in me. Yeah. I got guilt now for my daughter who doesn't have any of that guilt issue. Yeah. She doesn't care at all if my dad's- When she hears this podcast. She, <laughs> right. she doesn't care at all if my dad's feelings are hurt. Do and you regret shouldn't. trying to make it happen? I don't regret it. Would you do it again? I don't think I would do it again. Yeah. Unless I have it at my house. If they all come to my house, little different. I feel like it's, you know, it, it was at my sister's house. So I feel like I really put my, my not on enemy territory. I put my dad, not on enemy territory, but right, I don't but know like the word for it. The, not the, not probably an away game. Yes, for um, sure. Okay. So what do you, how do you, do you, so you feel guilty on the road or do you feel like, like, ah, I wish there was another way to. Yeah, I don't feel guilty on the road because I know it's my job. Yeah. But it's like this week in particular, right? I'm com I'm coming to LA to do things like this. I'm fortunate enough to have, you know, you let me do your podcast. So, um, you know, here I am. I, you know, I have a few of it these. It was up. a tough decision. <laughs> yeah. like, I really waited hard. Well, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I am happy to be here. I mean, yeah, this is I'm really happy to great. have you. And, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm spending a couple extra days out out here. Uh, in LA, and then I fly to Milwaukee, where I'll do three days of comedy. So now I'm gone for five days. Yeah. So I think my daughter gets it uh, a little bit. She knows Dad travels a lot, but my son is an infant still, and I think my son is like, "Where's that guy that's here yeah. sometimes?" Yeah. Well, you know, they don't have memories until they're like three. Yeah, and I hope he doesn't even notice. Here's the thing: you're still going to be on the road in yes three, four, or five years. Yes. I guess it's just a matter of like, it is an interesting thing where it's a new, not a new uh, phenomenon where men are like, I would like to be around that. I want to help yes. make the kids be emotionally healthy. Whereas there is a big part of men that is there. It's easy to just be like, I'm just going to earn and I'm a mule and I'm just going to get out there. I'm a beast of burden. I'm trying to get the money for these babies. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you got to do that. Yeah. Right. It has to, you, you know, it's like if you're, if you're home all the time, then you probably don't have any money. Yeah. You know, yes. because even, you know, even if you work from home, like you may physically be in the house. Yeah, but you're but, in your office or yes. whatever. So it's like, you know, you got to go earn. So I just try, I just want to minimize that. You know, well, what do other people say about, what do other comics say about it? What do other, or are they bad? It does. Do you not care? I I guess I I don't talk to enough people yeah. about it, but I also don't really care because I, I don't know. I feel like I live differently than a lot of people in yeah. in a lot of ways. So I'm just like you know. I just wanna. I like to analyze. I like to see what's going on, see how people are living their lives, and see how it's you know it affects. You have a lot of. Uh ambition or for your work stuff like do you, are, where are your ambitions more uh the emotional safety and health of your kids or is it the i want to make it more i want to do bigger venues and i want to 
I don't know that I am so ambitious. It's like I was uh, a pesticide salesman. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go to Lowe's and Home Depot stores and sell pesticides. And tell people the punchline, which you kind of, we kind of figured. I don't know if you can tell that by looking at me, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can tell that by looking at me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I started doing comedy as a hobby. And then I won a competition in Charleston. I made a thousand bucks. And then the next year, and in between that one and the next competition, I quit drinking. And then by the next year, I won the competition like by way more votes. And it's like, so I was like, oh, I maybe I got something here. So I start trying to figure out how to make money doing comedy. But I don't know if it was so much ambition as it was, I hate the other job that I have. And if I can make money doing this, yeah. I mean, I always said, I don't need to be famous. If I can make a living doing this, then that's better than what I was doing. It's so it's a, such a much better way to do it. Yeah. Just like, just do you have a job that's better than selling pesticide? Not like regional, a regional pesticide guy driving from parking lot to parking lot texting the guy that you're here <laughs> yeah and then and then so in so it makes you see comedy in a in a hell in a proportional way which is it's better than pesticide sales yeah i mean even when i was making less money because it was a good job right i had health insurance yeah. i had a car allowance i had you know i had a salary. same hair same beard same glasses uh, i well i had this hair at one point i did try to professional it up for a bit uh, I, you know, I cut my hair, tucked in the shirt, sure. wore a lot of khakis. Yep. I was really trying to do it for a minute, you know, uh -huh. but I was also drinking a lot. So what you had to do, you would have to drive to the Lowe's store and then go inside and you had to call in on the Lowe's phone to, you know, and to a system that way they knew you checked into that store. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do it from your cell phone. That was like the way to get yourself fired instantly. If you called in from your cell phone. Okay. But I would be So I had that part wrong. But yeah. you did have I knew you yes. had to call in. But I would be hungover. So I would go show up, call in on the Lowe's phone, and then go back out to my car and sit and smoke cigarettes and listen to the radio for an hour and then go back in. You know? Oh, so you were there. So you didn't even have to you didn't you weren't there to sell to the store. You were there to just sell in the store. Yeah, set up displays, yeah. do things like that. But it's like a lot of times you go in and you're like there's nothing really to do today. This store is set up. It looks. I good. was. I just spent three days at a Lowe's last week on a commercial, and it wasn't crowded. Yeah. It, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, in the morning, it's just yeah. not. It's like it's just not the busy time. Yeah, I mean, I had it all mapped out. I mean, there was one store in a place called Vidalia, Georgia, mm -hmm. where it was really far to get there for me and they had a great buffet basically behind the Lowe's. I would go clock Why? in. Why? Well, it was a restaurant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't just some guy <laughs> okay. out there. Yeah. So I would go clock in, walk through the store, go, it looks good. I would find some employee. I would go, you guys do a great job here. I really appreciate it. And then leave, go to the buffet, eat, come back, clock out, go to the next store. And did it matter that you hadn't sold any pesticide? No, no one. In fact, that store would prefer I didn't do anything in their store. They were like, we know what we want to do in here. We don't want you messing up anything. So I would, so it'd be great. Great. And then comedy is, is better than that. Yes. Yes. Do you, how are your nerves with comedy? I actually don't really get nervous. I mean, despite how I move around and twitch and, 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 and it just seems like I may have a nervous energy. But I've done enough cool things now to where I'm like, I don't really get that nervous. I mean, I do the, I've done the Grand Old Opry like 30 times. And to me, like as a lifelong country fan, um, to do the Opry is huge. And there's 4,400 people in there uh, when it's sold out. Is the, is the Opry the one that's downtown Nashville? That's the Ryman. That's, oh, right, that's right, the right. old yeah, Opry. Yeah. Okay. But even the new Opry's been there since like the 70s. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like this huge, and I've done the Ryman, which is also like the first time you do the Ryman, a lot of nerves. You do it several times. Yeah, you just get yeah. used to it. Even that, you know, I've done the Tonight Show. I just did my fourth appearance on the Tonight Show. And it's like the first time I think they thought they had made a mistake booking me because I was so nervous. Yeah. But I, this last time I did it, I wasn't nervous at all. I was like, all right, I've done this. Let's do it. I'm yeah. ha happy to be here. Now, on the other hand, I did the cellar 
to uh, to prepare for the uh, for for the Tonight Show, and I, I still I'm still nervous there because it just seems like the coolest place. Actually, the first time I did the Comedy Store, and the only time I did the Comedy Store, I. I was in the main room and I tripped down that little step going out. I was the first one, no host, no warm up. I got five minutes and I tripped coming off that step. Wonderful. But I still was able to recover and had a great set. Yeah, it was awesome. Great. But it's like, I don't know. I, I found a way to use the nerves. It's like if I am nervous, the only thing that anyone can notice is that my voice, if you know me really well, you can tell in my voice I'm a little nervous. Yeah. But other than that, all the moves are still the same. I may touch my glasses a bit more. So you are so you seem like a pretty healthy guy. I mean, like in terms of values and uh, like perspective, you seem like like, yeah, this is pretty going good. You seem like a nice guy. It's like, well, I'm just, uh, I'm very happy to be doing what I'm doing. I, I don't look at it as like, look how far I've come. Well, you don't thing. seem to have an ax to grind where everyone gets in here, get moves out here to like grind axes. Like where do, where's the ax? Where's the fucking, the thing I can get my ax on and show everyone and prove and I'll, sh you know. I just think it went away when I quit drinking. When I was in my 20s, I feel like that was my my whole thing. I had built up this idea that people in high school were were uh, one day they'll see, you know. And uh, when I quit drinking, I just I don't know. I gained a whole new perspective. And I don't think it's drinking for everyone, right? Like I always talk about drinking. I don't think drinking is a problem for everyone, yeah. right? So I don't. That's that's was my thing. For other people, it's weed. For other people, it's something else. Like yeah. me and my wife have the opposite thing. My wife has a real problem with weed, right? She doesn't do it because she. I mean, like I can make a a bag of weed last months. I would do yeah. a little puff here and there. My wife gets involved; it's gone in a day. Uh, but it, for me, it's drinking. Yeah. We have beer. My wife will drink, but we have beer in our fridge that's been there for months. But if I'm involved, there never was a liquor cabinet in my apartments because me and my buddies would buy a bottle of liquor and it's like- Why like, waste? Why yeah, put, it's not going to be in the cabinet very yeah, long. Yeah, we're going to drink this. That's yeah. why we bought it. This is the cabinet. Yes. Right yes, here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, but when I quit drinking, I don't know. I just felt like over time- all that went away that by the time I I actually got something, you know, like a Tonight Show or JFL, something that was really cool, I wasn't like, I'm going to show people. I'm like, I I feel okay about who I am. And uh, it just, I feel good about this. And then that's why it's like, now I, I feel like I only say positive things about my hometown. I'm not like, you know, screw, screw my home. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm happy to have grown up there and I love to go back and visit my friends and uh, I only want to say good things about where I grew up. It's funny because you seem weirder on stage than you are off stage. Well, it's, a, it's like a kind of, usually if someone's weird on stage, they're fucking crazy weird <laughs> off stage. Well, comedy makes me weird. I, I like weird comedy. Like, you know, uh, like a, a Neil Hamburger. I saw Neil Hamburger at the poor house in Charleston uh, years ago. I had no idea what I was seeing. My friend took me and uh, I was so blown away yeah. by that, that I was like, if he can do that, then I can do anything with comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I love it. Like the, the uh, Neil Hamburger um, hot February night album is one of my favorites. I love, I'm like this, I can't tell if the audience hates him or if they love him. But well, it's this similar thing where Neil Hamburger can't really bomb. Yes. Because he's bom He's already bombing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you can either join him or not. Yes. But he's gonna go and bomb. Yes. And he doesn't think it's going good. He doesn't, you don't get a sense that he has any idea what's happening. Yes, of course he does, but right, but you, but it doesn't matter what the audience does. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. Yeah, and and it's like so. I like 
weird comedy like that. I, yeah. I think that's fun. And I am a weird guy, but I, you know, I also feel like, you know, we're having a like a one on one conversation. I just I'm like, I don't know. It's just not in me to be to get get real weird with it. You know, with with a one on one conversation. Yeah, like my I had this boss I used to work with, and he he played football for the Buffalo Bills like in the '60s, and he became he he was my boss as the pesticide salesman before I became the boss, and he was like a real mentor. When you murdered him and became the boss. Yes, yes, yes. and he became a real mentor for me, and and he we used to have a lot of one on one conversations when I was in my early 20s and I was very uncomfortable, but we would sit in his truck and he would smoke cigarettes and we would talk. And I I talked to him about that and he goes, well, one-on-one, you don't get to be a character. You don't get to be the entertainer. You're having real conversations with people. When you're when you're in front of multiple people, you can become, you know, the entertainer version of yourself. Yeah, I I went somewhere this weekend and the guy there was a guy who just kept saying like you don't seem funny and i was like i'm i know i don't but i can show you tape (laughs) right right (laughs) what do you want me to do because being funny in a conversation with a stranger is weird i can go for jokes but you're not you don't even know what i'm like normally so let's set up what i'm like normally and then we'll go we'll build out from there yeah and even like telling you the joke yeah. that you already like, yeah, uh, was very uncomfortable. It's for me. incredibly uncomfortable. That's yeah. what's so that's what's so wonderful about it that yeah. I make people do. It. It's just a copyright issue. I mean, I, I understand do. it's absolutely dreadful. I mean, I don't mind doing it. Sure, I've done so much radio. When I first started doing radio, <laughs> yeah. I used to go in when I would be like, "All right, these are my setups." And I would just have them hit me with the setups and I would just do the jokes. But when you walk in and it's just one other guy and he's doing the setups, it is like the most uncomfortable thing. Because whether he laughs or not, it's like, if he laughs, it feels like he faked it. If Mm -hmm. he doesn't laugh, I'm bombing on the radio. Mm -hmm. What if he says, it's going to be this Thursday, guys, (laughs) this Thursday through Sunday. Said one show Sunday. Um, uh, all right, so very good. You're, you're. I like talking to you. You're a good man. Uh, anything we didn't cover? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, you know, uh, I, I think we talked about the special. I'd love for people to go watch. Yeah, the it's very special. funny. It was in the top ten for over a week. I think. And yeah, very exciting. Yeah, uh, and it's you know it's fun. It's uh you know I I would did re- it improve because you have a joke about web traffic about your website, how much did the traffic go up? It did go up quite a bit. Yeah. It went up quite a bit. What was the peak day? Uh, I don't know. I'd say there for about a week after. Uh, it took about a week before my email would say, web traffic is down today. Got it. It would say up every day. Yeah. And then finally it was down. But even when it was down, it was like, it's, still like- it's only down from what it was up. I mean, it, it's still up from the original numbers. It has to be. And yeah, it's great. I mean, I got uh, had a I had my my weed joke uh, about weed being too strong. Really went viral on you on Facebook. Great. And I feel like that's where all the old dudes are at. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it is too strong. On TikTok and Instagram, they're like, you're weak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not strong enough, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, buddy. Well, you're you're so funny. Watch a special. Watch his, a half hour was great and the hour was great. Thank um, you. And uh, Dusty Slay, everybody. We're having a good time.